we have seen in the previous video that the cutoff frequency for the TENM mode it can be determined as B dash NM over 2 by A square root mu epsilon, where B dash NM is the mth root of the basal of the first derivative of the basal function of order n. And we said that the different values for B n dash M for the different values of n and different values of M are obtained from this table. It can be noted here that the lowest quantity of B n M dash is B11 dash. B11 dash is the smallest value in this case. So this means that the lowest cutoff frequency or the mode which has the lowest cutoff frequency is TE11. And the cutoff frequency in this case is determined as 1.841 over 2 by A square root mu epsilon. So in this case, the dominant mode in cylindrical uh, waveguide is TE11. And to remember, in the case of rectangular waveguide, it was TE10. But at the present case, there is no TE10 mode. Okay? So the lowest cutoff frequency or the dominant mode in circular waveguide is TE11 mode. For the case of TE11 mode, the field components of this dominant mode can be represented as HZ A sine phi multiplied by basal function J1 because this the mode N1 J1 of K0 e to the power minus J beta Z. It should be noted here that we assume that the uh, dependence on phi is sine phi only. This is simply because the angle of phi, it can be rotated at any angle. So we can represent it completely in terms of sine or completely in terms of cosine. So there is no need to make the combination some part in sine and some part in cosine. So we are going to use sine phi only. In this case, the transverse field components E rho, E phi, H rho, H phi would be obtained as follows. Here, E rho would be the derivative of Hz with respect to phi. So it is 1 over rho partial Hz by partial phi. Partial Hz by partial phi is cosine phi. So cosine phi over rho. And here the amplitude A and the basal function J1 of KCO is to the power minus J beta, C, uh, beta Z. And the multiplication coefficient is minus J omega mu over KC squared. E phi would be minus J omega mu over KC squared partial HZ by partial rho. Partial HZ by partial rho would be KC j1 dash j1 dash and we already have kc and kc squared so it will be 1 over kc so it is j omega mu over kc a sine phi because there is no derivative with respect to phi here j1 dash kc rho e to the power minus j beta z in a similar way we say that h rho is proportional to the derivative of Hz with respect to rho. So it is minus G beta over Kc, A sine phi, G1 dash Kc rho. And H phi is proportional to 1 over rho partial by partial phi Hz. So it is minus G beta over Kc squared rho A cosine phi G1 Kc rho E to the power minus G beta Z. And EZ equals zero because we are talking about transverse electric mode. So there is no longitudinal electric field component. These are the field components of the dominant 
mode TE11 in cylindrical waveguides. This field distribution uh, is drawn. It can be represented as follows. Uh, this is the lines of the electric field. And this is and these are uh, the lines of the magnetic field. It can be noted here that we have one peak in uh, five direction. So while I'm rotating here, I have a peak in five direction. That's why it is mode one. Okay. And also I have one peak of the electric field in one direction, which is constant in one direction, in, in uh, row direction. Uh, if we draw uh, along the longitudinal of the waveguide, we find that HZ is rotating here. So we have HZ here, HZ here, and HZ is maximum uh, near the walls of the waveguide, while uh, H row and H five are maximum at the center, and these points correspond to the electric field. So the electric field is always transverse with respect to the longitudinal direction. If I'm talking about the mode T E zero one. And should be noted that we have zero one, but we don't have one zero. If I'm talking about the mode TE zero one, in TE zero one we don't have variation in phi, so the electric field in this case is continuous along phi. It makes circles along the phi, and the magnetic field is normal to these electric field lines. So this is uh, or these are the magnetic field lines which are in radial direction from looking at uh, the longitudinal direction this is are these are the magnetic field lines near the walls we have maximum hz but inside we have h rho and in normal direction we have E5. So, in this case, the electric field is phi mainly phi component only. Okay? For the bar transfer in TE11 mode in cylindrical waveguide, we say that the bar is half real E cross H conjugate, and we are talking about the field or the power passing in z direction so it is dot z integrated a cross section the cross section is rho d phi d rho or rho d rho d phi uh, and the limits of integration for phi from 0 to 2 pi and for rho from 0 to a in this case e cross h conjugate is effectively e rho cross h phi conjugate minus E phi cross H rho conjugate because already we have E rho, E phi, H rho and H phi so in this case it would be E rho H phi conjugate minus E phi H rho conjugate and actually this minus sign comes from uh, the dot product with the unit vector in Z direction because E rho cross H phi is E rho H phi in the Z direction. But E phi cross H rho is E phi H rho in negative Z direction. So the dot product here will introduce this negative sign. Now by applying the field components E rho H phi conjugate and E phi H rho conjugate, we obtain this formula. Uh, effectively, this comes from here, here. 
E rho and H phi are proportion to vessel function directly. And E phi H rho are proportion to the first derivative of vessel function. So this component would be proportion to G1 squared and this component would be proportion to G1 uh, dash squared. And here is cosine squared phi, here is sine squared phi. And the coefficient of multiplication would be the same because here we have omega mu over kc squared rho multiplied by b over kc squared rho. Here we have omega mu over kc multiplied by b over kc. So here would be, uh, here we have in the first term e rho h phi, we have kc squared in the denominator. Here we have kc only in the denominator. So we can find uh, this function as the argument of the integration. Here is a cosine phi multiplied by this function. And we have 1 over rho in this term. So 1 over rho squared. And here we have uh, kc to the power 4 in the denominator, but we have kc squared here. We have sine squared phi, this is function g1 dash kc rho, d rho d phi d rho. Okay. Effectively, the integration with respect to phi is very simple. Cosine squared phi for sine squared phi for phi from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, it would be y. So the integration with respect to phi is very simple. So this would be very simple as y. But the integration with respect to the Bessel function and the first derivative of Bessel function is slightly quite complicated. And from the tables of uh, finite integration, we can obtain this formula for the integration of this function from rho equals 0 to rho equals a. Okay, where b11 dash is the first root of g1 dash of this function. So, this is the formula for the power transfer for te11 mode in cylindrical waveguide can be noted that it is proportional to the basal function g1 squared kca it is inversely proportional to kc to the power 4 and the remaining part may be quite close to the case of rectangular waveguide in a similar way we are talking about the conductor loss of transverse electric 1 1 mode in cylindrical waveguide in this case the power losses is half the surface resistance multiplied by the current squared on uh, the circumference of the waveguide uh, the circumference of the waveguide is at a radius a and the circumference is rho d phi where rho equals a and d phi extends from 0 to 2 pi the surface current in this case, Gs squared, is proportional to uh, the tangential magnetic field components squared. So Gs squared equals H phi squared plus Hz squared, which corresponds to the magnetic or the surface current due to H phi plus the surface current due to Hz. And the total current is the current H phi or actually H phi introduce G Z and H Z introduce uh, G phi. So this this component squared plus this component squared correspond to the total uh, surface current squared. Now from the function of H phi and the function of H Z by squaring each one of them and taking the magnitude and uh, applying the value of rho equals a because we are at uh, the outer surface of 
the waveguide so the value of rho in this case would be a so in this case we are uh, applying uh, h phi for example h phi squared would be beta squared over kc squared over uh, sorry kc to the power 4 over rho squared rho squared here would be a squared because i'm um, at the radius a multiplied by a squared uh, cosine squared phi j1 of kc a squared this h phi hz is a squared sine squared phi j1 kc a squared so by taking these values we can obtain the, this formula of this integration once again we are going to integrate with respect to phi so cosine squared phi or sine squared phi integrated from 0 to 2 pi is actually pi this means that this would be beta squared over cases to power 4 a squared plus 1 multiplied by pi a squared r surface squared and here we have a we have this function g1 of kca over 2 this is the power losses due to the conductor loss in cylindrical wave now by using the power losses and the transmitted power we can obtain the attenuation coefficient due to the conductor loss alpha c equals b losses over 2b naught and already we obtained b losses and previously we obtained b naught so alpha cutoff or uh, sorry alpha conductor the conductor attenuation coefficient alpha conductor would be r surface multiplied by kc to the power 4 a squared plus beta squared over eta k actually this eta k is omega mu beta a multiplied by b1 dash b11 dash squared minus 1 which can be simplified as r surface over a k eta beta multiplied by kc squared plus k squared over b11 dash squared minus 1 in neighbor per meter if i'm interested to obtain this value in db per meter i multiply this value by the value 8.6 okay all right